On today's episode, we talk to Carol Morgan, owner of Stage Right Home Staging, who provides vacant, occupied, and design services throughout the area of Southwest Michigan. Listen as we share about her thriving business and team, and find out what it takes to stage for DIY and HGTV. Now let's get started. This is the Stager Boss Podcast from StagerBoss.com with the founder of HSRA, Jana Esselton. The Home Staging and Redesign Association is a group of like-minded professionals dedicated to revolutionizing the real estate industry by making a difference in the lives and businesses of home stagers and redesigners everywhere. Join us as we talk to the best of the best in this industry from all over the world and hear how they are using their training and experience to make a difference in the clients they serve. If you are a real estate industry expert looking for better ways to market and sell properties, join us for this podcast series. Welcome to another episode of our Stage Your Boss podcast. We're so glad you guys are joining us today. Um, I hope that you're sitting back with your coffee or something that's a nice cool beverage that you can just enjoy this next few minutes. Um, I want to introduce you to one of my uh, closest friends, my travel partner, my uh, confidant, you know, through the, the years of doing home staging. We both have our home staging businesses and they've, uh, her business has just gone to the exponential level. So without further ado, um, welcome, Miss Carol. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Carol Morgan. Um, we own Stage Ride Home Staging. It, we are located in the greater Kalamazoo, Battle Creek, Southwest Michigan area. Um, we've been around all years. We have uh, four stagers on board. I just hired a furniture guy, so someone to repair our furniture and to assemble our furniture. And we probably see about 350 properties a year. Yeah. So good. So good. I, I love it. I love that we were, we were going to actually come see you guys this year, right? We might need to get that back on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we go back a, a, a ways, like I mentioned, and Carol actually sits on our board of advisors for the Home Staging and Redesign Association. And she has earned that spot coming from corporate America um, and thinking about best practices and really seeing her business from that business owner mindset. And I'm excited to dive in today. So Carol, um, I love the stories. I feel like I shouldn't know these stories, but I know these stories and they're so fun. Um, tell me, how did you even get into the home staging industry? Oh, you know, it was an accident. And I, I would like to say I'm one of those people that have like a five-year plan and a vision. And I do now, but at the time I didn't. I had actually retired and I'd been retired for four years. And I'd done a lot of not-for-profit, um, you know, worked with a lot of companies helping a lot of not-for-profits get on board and get their P&Ls together because they have to have them. You know, they can't just operate out of their checkbook. I worked with the public schools for below grade level and at-risk children. And I had lunch with a friend of mine who was a real estate agent who had also, um, prior to this, had actually reported to me when, when I had my other job. And so we decided to hook up for lunch. And she said, well, how's retirement going? And I said, well, you know, it's really not what I thought it would be. And I was 60 at the time. I'd retired at 56. And she said, well, if you could do anything, what would you do? Which is a perfect question, right? And I said, well, Deb, I said, I think I'd go back to my art and design background because I was actually an art major in college. And she said, well, why don't you stage houses? And I said, well, okay, I'll do that. You know, RC <laughs> It's just fun, right? So um, I looked it up. You know, did a search and I found a school in Chicago. It was um, Barb Swartz. And I went to school for, I don't know, four days, whatever it was in Chicago and um, came back and, and got started. I think it was June of uh, 2007. And I actually had my first job job um, in that August. And then it was just like my husband and I, you know, I did a lot of consultations and then I decided to do furniture. And so I went to a third party and did you want to hear that story too? Like when my husband almost left me. <laughs> 
Yes, I know the elevator so story. We I know the elevator, elevator story. story. <laughs> we were doing a, a loft and um, you have to use a service elevator and it was February and I live in Michigan. So, you know, you never know. It could be 50, it could be minus 40. And it was snowing really heavy that day. And I had the furniture and we had to go up a service elevator. The service elevator was the same size as myself and a love seat. So we had to take everything up one piece at a time. So we would go into the elevator and my husband would push the, the sofa or the love seat on there with a dolly and then I'd hold it and he'd push the button and then we'd go up three flights. And then, cause that's what our lofts are in, in, in Southwest Michigan. They're three stories high, okay? So he would meet me, the doors would open, I'd push out the uh, love seat. And after about the third time of doing that, he looked at me and he said, really, Carol? Really, this is what we're doing? <laughs> I said, trust me, it'll get better. And it has, with the help of, of Jenna and um, the HSRA and all of the mentoring that they have done, it has gotten better. <laughs> well, you guys have a, ph a phenomenal uh, business there in, in Michigan. And I know that you have had the ups and downs of real estate, you know, supply and demand. You guys work in a, a, a certain geographic. Um, we are here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you know, miles and miles. You guys a little different. Um, and even your your agent count there, right, is a little different than than what most staging companies in big city is, is facing. So tell me a little bit about your demographic. Um, what does real estate look like uh, within the area that you serve? Well, it's interesting. I was just reading some statistics. Um, we, we have some new build. We are not in a building frenzy. Um, most of the houses that are built in this area are custom homes. Once in a great while, you'll see spec. Um, the, the, build, the builders are a little hesitant to build specs because we don't have that large of a market. Um, it is improving. I mean, I opened in 2007. What was I thinking, right? That's what the market took it down. But um, anyway, so that's what it looks like. We're very close to a college. So we have some vintage areas where you have vintage homes. Um, and then we have, the, we have the lakes. We have all the Great Lakes and we have a lot of Chicago people. So we're in a, a secondary residence type of environment. And when they get ready to sell those, you know, they're, they're multi-million dollar homes, but they don't want, they being a the seller, they don't really want them or the buyer to look like multi-million dollar homes. They want them to be cozy and comfy. So they're staged a little bit differently. So we have a lot of target markets. We have equine estates. We have a lot of golf courses. Um, we don't have a lot of downtown kind of things going on. <laughs> it's just mostly out. And then we have a lot of rural where we ha might have 28 acres of land and a, and a cute little house on, you know, in the middle of 28 acres of land. That's the hook. If they can get the house, they, it, it's really nice. Yes, that's good. And you guys just uh, wrapped up um, a shoot for TV. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, actually, um, we have an area gentleman who, who buys distressed homes. And when I say distressed, I mean he buys them for like $5,000. Wow. And they're ready to be condemned by the city. And his goal is to improve neighborhoods. And when you improve neighborhoods, you improve tax base. And when you improve tax base, you improve, you know, like the police presence, you, you improve the schools, you improve services. Um, there's more money with which to maintain or sustain the neighborhood. So that's his goal. And he's doing very well at it. I mean, he just does um, hundreds of houses a year. So he pitched to um, a producer in Detroit about a, a, a series of featuring these distressed homes, flipping them and then having somebody stage them. And it was the, the pr uh, program was called Gritty to Pretty. Well, sure enough, it was pitched. Um, the producer took it and they filmed it and it got picked up by the DIY network, a pilot last year. We staged it, it was fun. Um, we learned a lot. We learned a lot from the producer on staging for television. It's a little bit different than staging for real life. Um, and then subsequent to that, um, HGTV picked up that pilot and they're going to run a pilot and I believe it's this month it's going to air. And we're hoping to go to series, which would be somewhere between nine and 12 houses going forward. And hopefully we'll get to stage all of those. The biggest thing we learned is that, and you'd think you'd know this, but you know, when we're staging, we're staging, you know, incrementally, we're pulling people through the house the camera is pulling people through the house in, in live television. 
And so you have to have something in every frame. And so in the beginning, we were staging a little light. Um, and the producer talked to me about that. And he said, you know, my camera, and he wasn't upset or anything. He was teaching, it was a teachable moment. He said, we have to have something in every frame. Otherwise the camera doesn't have anywhere to go. And so we beefed up our, our um, staging. And then he talked to us about a story. He said, every, every show that we produce has a story. In this particular case, that we, the house that we were in, it had gone from a 2 1 to a 3 2. Okay. That was the story. And, so, and it had a walk in pantry. That was part of the story. So the staging has to complement the actual story. I mean, you can stage the whole house, but you really want to highlight the story. And so when we took this master bedroom that had been developed, um, it was large enough to have a sitting area an office, the master bedroom, and then a master bath. So we made it just very opulent and, and very, you know, eye-catching because that was part of the story. It was like the ta-da moment. No, that's so, so good. Great. So good. Well, it was so, I mean, I just, I, now I watch things completely differently than I did before, you know. Yeah, so, you're, you're yeah, absolutely fun. right. Yeah, and it helps, all, I think, too, with the staging, the production that we do day in, day out in, you know, the field um, to be able to think a little differently, almost like in layers um, as we are, you know, telling that story. Because as we know, the buyer is walking in, they're saying, is this the home for me? They're wanting that home now to to come to life and them see them themselves there. So when it comes to day-to-day -day staging, um, I would love to know just a little bit about your team and then what are your what are your favorite clients to work with? <laughs> well, our team is amazing. They have we have longevity. Um, Trisha has been with me for nearly eight years. Carla a little over four and Kathy a little over four. Tori about eight months. Um, my husband's been with me for 52 years. So he has the most seniority. <laughs> um, so they each have roles and responsibilities besides staging. Everybody has been, is now a lead stager. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they all have, with the exception of Tori, they all have their luxury designation. So we have a luxury market. I, I've got people to do that. Um, and then they have some other areas of responsibility. For example, Trisha takes care of our events. She takes care of our networking. She takes care of scheduling. Um, nobody coordinates events better than Trisha, and she is a great, great networker. She um, answers the phone. She gets things scheduled. She tries to troubleshoot. Um, and then Carla is taking over our marketing. She does social media for us. Um, she's working with our website. And actually, she and Trisha have a dotted line to one another because what Trisha does and what um, Carla does, it really has to complement each other. They can't operate in a silo. And then Carla used to have Darby, and now Kathy has Darby. And Kathy also has policy and procedure, and she does like all of the contracts, all of the proposals. Um, she follows up on all of that. And then she has a dotted line to Trisha to make sure Trisha is scheduling things. And we just implemented um, another CRM, so we're all learning how to use that. Um, and then my favorite kind of client to work with, it's, we've been so blessed. I mean, I have some amazing agents, and I would say 95 96% of our revenue stream is initiated by an agent. Um, some clients just call us out of the blue, but that's not typical. That's very atypical. Um, and we do Google AdWords and everything. I was just, <laughs> you know, I was hoping that it would turn a little bit. But um, the ones that we have established relationships with, I don't think I have an agent that I've worked with for under eight years. We've worked as soon as I started getting furniture, it might've been nine years. Um, we just continue to work together and we do a lot of things to stay in front of them without taking them donuts. Um, we're not really big donut deliverers, but we have breakfast with the stagers at our warehouse. We have lunch with the stagers. Um, we go to 100% of the events in the area. And what I tell the stagers is please don't sell staging just sell yourself because those agents just have to love you and trust you. They're handing over their salary to you. <laughs> They're entrusting you with their living. So we have to make sure that it's a positive experience. And we just, we have great people that we work with. Yeah, that's so good. And when it comes to the, the agent um, seller relationship, you know, they're usually the, the, the first responder and they're able to walk the home, price the home, help with, with all that they need. Um, 
what do you feel like agents can do to take that relationship to the next level when it comes to um, incorporating home staging? You know, maybe you have agents out there that are not um, incorporating home staging. And so is it, do you feel like it is um, fear of the unknown or maybe they have been uh, worked with a stager previously that it didn't go so well? And, um, you know, sometimes I think the agent has a challenge of just conveying the information um, to that seller to say, this is what we need to do. I'm confident this is what's keeping us back or what will help us reach that next, next level. So what does that conversation look like or what do you wish that it would look like for those agents that are not working with stagers? Yeah. Well, when we have our breakfast with the stagers, we deliver scripts to the agents that will help That's them through great. that process because what happens is they get a little bit nervous. Uh, they don't want to hurt someone's feelings. And I don't know if you remember this, but there was a show and it was on one of the, you know, the age type shows and it was a mother and a daughter and part of their, oh, their, you know, their ambiance, I suppose, is one was really positive and one was really negative. And there was a lot of sarcasm, like, look at that. Can you believe they did that? You know, and, and I think that's what, and this was years ago, and I think people thought that's what stagers do is they come in and just kind of talk mean and, and put your house down. So there's a little bit of that. And then there's a little bit of offense. Well, why do I need a stager? So we, what we've tried to do is we've tried to take those objections and turn them into positive scripts. Mm -hmm. So when we have breakfast with the stagers or lunch with the stagers, we, we do some role playing. Um, agents have asked us to do that. But I said, no, your opening line is part of my strategy is that we work with a stager. stager. Nice. And so it, it's not like I think you need a stager or I'd like to, oh, I'd like to bring a stager in. We just, you know, I have a photographer. I work with a stager, you know, we the title company, whatever that is. And it's like a package. And ultimately that helps to kind of soothe that over. The other thing we do is we give those agents coupons and they give the homeowner a coupon and there's a, a, a discount from the regular price to the price that, that the homeowner is going to be charged. And in some cases they pay that, but I, and I honor that discount with them as well. Um, so as far as like wishing, um, I, I wish that they would, they being the agents would maybe talk to us a little bit more about what we're walking into sometimes. <laughs> You know, we don't always know the circumstances, um, you know, and it may be something that's not as positive as somebody would like to. And if we just know that, then we can go in and feeling a little bit more confident in, in what we're addressing. But other than that, uh, the agents are amazing around here and they're very close to us, um, but we see them, we're small geography. We see them all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love that you guys are part of the the events that go on. You're also part of the Builders Association there, and it really makes um, you guys just won an award, right? With um, with one of the was it the Realtor Association or um, that, I think that's huge. Yeah, we did. We we won affiliate of the year, and um, and that's just for our contribution to the association as an affiliate member. Um, you know, going to the events, um, being there, just helping with our community events as well, because many of the, um, the association does a lot of charity work. And so we're involved in, in um, that and helping that uh, along. We donate gift baskets or we, you know, decorate. We just had a gala. Um, we decorated for that and we, we did all of the, we have a silent auction. We did all the tables. So it was really dramatic and, you know, just try to do what we, what we do best and that stage stuff. And so we help in that regard. Yeah. Um, but I think the awards help the agents to make a case, a business case about staging. And they have to have enough information to be able to make a good business case. And when they can say, uh, part of my strategy is I work with a stager and this particular stager has one affiliate of the year. She has, uh, last year she had 250 hours of um, mastery level education. And she's won top, 10 staging companies and house six years in a row, whatever that is, that adds credibility. And we have to put the agents in a position where they can make a business case. So that's what we try to do.
I love that. And I was going to bring up all of the awards that you guys have won over the years, um, which definitely sends the message that you guys, um, you know, you can know, know us, like us and trust us. Um, and you're, you're going to be in good hands with us because it is, I mean, these are national awards. And as you mentioned, you know, over 250 CE credits per year that you are traveling, you are um, going to different events, masterminding, you are in the room with high level level business owners throughout the country to only take that knowledge back to your hometown, making sure that, uh, that you guys are running at excellence. And another key point that, that you brought out was um, with agents, when they have proven repeatable systems, now it's, it's a system, it's not my opinion, but you know, to sell a property, this every property that I list goes through these steps so that it is successful and it has a, a predictable outcome. Um, so I, I love that. I love that. Any final things that you want, you want the listeners to know about you guys or, or any last words? Well, you know, we, we love our community and um, we do get very excited about staging the houses and we get excited when they sell. And we have, <laughs> we have a thing where as soon as we find out the house is pending, you know, we have like kind of like a little you know, we hug each other kind of party. And we always try to send out something that's congratulatory to the agent. And we post it on Facebook. So know that it's, it's, it's not just a business here for us. It's, it's part of a strategy and it's part of a, the road to success. And we get as excited about selling your house, maybe not quite as much as you do, but we get pretty excited about it. And um, we love outcomes. You know, we love outcomes. So um, we like positive outcomes. And so that's what you have to know about us. Um, that, and everybody loves what they do. That's the thing. We, that's our tagline. And it's, we love what we do. So I have been fortunate enough to have people that are around me that absolutely love their job. And they love it all the time. So that's what, and you know, just know that uh, we care about your house. We do. Yeah. yeah well, it's, it's definitely proof is in the pudding with the longevity of your team, with um, all that, that you guys are involved with, with being uh, number one, having the market share that you do, um, being the go-to uh, staging company, not only locally, but you guys as um, a national influence um, in our entire industry. I think it's huge and I cannot wait to see all that you guys accomplished this year. Can't wait to see you um, in some of our trips where we're going to be master masterminding together as well and and uh, look forward just congratulations uh, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Okay thank you very much Jana. Have a great day. Thank Bye you, everybody. Bye-bye.